Is gRPC going to replace REST APIs? To answer this question, we first need to understand what gRPC is, how it works, and how it's different from REST APIs. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly when to use each one. So most of the time, apps and services communicate over the web using REST APIs. It's straightforward. You send a request and you get a response, usually in JSON format. But here's the thing. While REST is simple and reliable, it's not the fastest or the most efficient option, especially when you need to transfer large amounts of data or make a lot of requests in a short time. Enter gRPC. Instead of using JSON over HTTP, gRPC leverages something called protocol buffers or protobufs for short. Protobufs are a faster, more efficient way to package data. They use a compact binary format with small numeric tags instead of repeating field names as text. This reduces the data size and makes it easier and faster for computers to process across different programming languages. But gRPC isn't just about protobufs. It also runs on HTTP2, a major upgrade over HTTP 1.1 that REST APIs typically use. HTTP2 brings several key improvements, like multiplexing, where multiple requests can happen at the same time on a single connection without waiting for the previous request to complete. REST, in comparison, processes requests one at a time or needs multiple connections, which can add latency. HTTP2 in gRPC also enables compressed headers, real-time bidirectional streaming, and seamless integration through proto-generated stubs. With these stubs, client requests data from the server by making direct calls to the server as if they were calling a local function in the server. All of these make gRPC more efficient in theory. The question then becomes, when should you choose gRPC over REST? One of the major places gRPC shines is in microservices architecture. If you're building a system where many services need to communicate constantly, gRPC's speed and efficiency can drastically reduce delays compared to REST. It also shines in real-time applications and high-performance systems where its streaming capabilities and compact protobuf messages make it the better choice for continuous low-latency compact data transfer. But here's the thing, gRPC isn't always the best fit. If your app primarily interacts with web browsers, REST is often simpler because browsers don't natively support gRPC yet. Plus, REST text-based JSON is easier to debug and more human-readable, which can be helpful for external-facing APIs. Think of it this way. REST is like sending letters through the mail. Reliable, but a bit slow and bulky. gRPC is like instant messaging. Fast, lightweight, and built for constant communication. A lot of companies actually use both. REST for external-facing APIs and gRPC for internal services talking to each other. So, will gRPC replace REST APIs? Probably not entirely but it's a powerful tool for specific scenarios where performance is key. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. If you'd like to see me cover any topic, leave it in the comments below. Until then, catch you on the next one. Peace.